Hey guys, it's Ryan Bridge, the Bugman, and I'm coming to you from Bugman headquarters here in the studio. And look, man, today we're going to talk about flies, but not just any fly. We're going to talk about bot flies. Now, if you don't know who I am, my name is Ryan Bridge. People call me the Bugman. I go to schools and churches. I go out and I teach people about bugs and insects and cool, creepy stuff, man. This is what I do for a living, right here, all right? So, today's program, we're going to focus on bot flies. What are bot flies? If you know what bot flies are, then you already know where this is probably going to go. If you don't know anything about bot flies, you're either going to be incredibly amazed at what some insects can do, or you're gonna be really grossed out about the lengths certain bug guys will go to to experience what certain incredible insects are capable of. All right, now, these are not bot flies. This is just here just to get your attention. These are just a nice collage, a mix match, if you will, of flies. Um, I'm not real big on collecting flies. Some people are. I'm not. I'm looking for big, crazy, creepy, scary stuff, and flies do not always fall into that category. There are some big, cool flies out there, but generally speaking, flies don't fall into a bug man program very often, but today we're going to focus on bot flies. So let me give you the quick introduction to bot flies. Bot flies are a fly. They're in the order Diptera. They're in the family of uh, Ostridae. Almost, how do you know? Ostridae. So it's just a fly, right? No big deal. Pesky, whatever, whatever your interpretation of a fly is. Bot flies are way out of your imagination. All right, now, a female bot fly is going to fly out into the world, is going to capture, literally in flight, find and grab a hold of a female mosquito. The female bot fly is going to lay her eggs onto the bottom of the thorax of the female mosquito and release it. See, Bot fly adults don't have a mouth. They're not going to feed. They're not going to eat. They're not capturing mosquitoes to eat them. They're capturing mosquitoes so that the females can lay eggs on them. And when that female mosquito finds a host, because keep in mind, man, female mosquitoes, they're the only ones that are biting us. They're the only ones that are feeding on warm-blooded mammals. See, that female mosquito is going to find a host. She's going to land, she's going to stab the host, and she's going to drink blood. Because that's what mosquitoes do. Now, when she pushes herself onto that host to drink blood, those bot fly eggs are now going to come off and be left on the host. The body temperature of the host is now going to incubate those eggs, and over a very, very short period of time, those eggs are going to hatch, and those tiny, tiny little microscopic bot fly maggots are going to then enter the body, either through where the mosquito fed on the host, or probably just use one of the pores in the skin of the mammal. Now, let's talk about the particular bot fly that I want to focus on, and that would be the Dermatobia hominis. There you go, hominis. So you know, we're talking about the bot fly that is going to affect human beings. Um, there might be other bot flies out there that do that, but the hominis is the one that is most commonly uh, being parasitic on humans. Now, how does this process work? Because think about it. If a mosquito lands on you and you get a bot fly maggot into your skin, into your dermis. It has to go somewhere. It has to do something. Well, this is where things get really weird. See, there are bot flies out there that don't that don't use the dermis. There's bot flies out there that also affect the gut of a mammal as well. So 
you may or may not be one of these folks who gets a bot fly in your skin. You might get them in your gut, but most commonly they're affecting people through mosquito bites. Um, Belize is a perfect example of bot fly capital of the world. It even has the nickname as the bot fly capital of the world because there are more people in Belize affected by bot flies than probably anywhere else. I can attest to that. Um, my last trip to Belize, somewhat 15 or so years ago, turned into what ended up being... I, I brought bot flies home. What can I say, man? Um, you get bitten by mosquitoes, you don't know it, and about three weeks later, you start to feel things going on. Um, and just like we would typically reach up and scratch an itch or we would rub something and then we forget about it for the rest of the day. It's very quick, very simple, no real thought to it. There's just, there's an irritation and, and it's gone. That's how bot flies work. The maggot of the bot fly gets into a pore on your skin. And I'm telling you, this while it's grossing you out, I want you to pay attention to the details here because this is where insects get incredible. Not only did it catch the female mosquito in flight and then lay its eggs on it and turn it loose, now that larva, that maggot is in a pore inside your skin. And in order to grow, it has to, well, expand its living quarters. And by doing so, it simply chews and eats its way uh, to, you know, eats its feeding on living tissue. So it's one of the few insects that feeds on living tissue. Think about it. Dead bodies and, you know, carrion is all dead tissue. That's what insects are generally going after is dead tissue. Bot flies, the maggots are going to feed on living tissue. So once it's in your skin and you don't even know it's there, about three weeks later, you begin to get sensations. And the only reason you're feeling sensations is because that, that bot fly larva is taking bites out of living tissue inside your skin. And you feel every single one of those bites. Every time that little microscopic larva takes a mouthful, you feel that. I did. And it comes off as a quick irritation, no big deal, little itch, little, you know, just something. And then it's gone for a while. And then maybe, you know, 10 minutes later, you feel it again. And, and, and you don't really think about it. After a long, you know, after a long time of that, maybe a week or so of that goes on, you find it now you're starting to, you're starting to feel that you've been scratching out a lot. And now you've actually irritated that spot. But then you also look down and you're going to have a small red dot right wherever that, that larva is, that maggot is. That is called the warble. That hole they've created in your dermis is known as a warble. And the warble is basically the new living quarters and that maggot is going to eat and chew and expand that in order to allow itself to grow. Now, if they're inside your skin, how in the world do they breathe? Well, this gets really interesting. The, the maggot of the bot fly is face down, is head down into the dermis and therefore the abdomen is sticking upright. And anytime they need to take a breath of air, they simply raise themselves up, stick their, ab their abdomen out of the hole in the top of the warble, take a breath of air, and go back in. Look at the way the larva is shaped. It's perfect for this. Large and bulbous around the head, and yet thin and long going out to where it can simply lift itself up just far enough to get that, that breathing you know, the spiracle out of the hole in the warble and therefore it can take a nice big breath of air and then go back down in. So, three weeks after returning from Belize, I started having sensations. I had a sensation in my elbow, I had a sensation in the side of my calf, and I had a sensation right there, right up on top of my head. And this went on. And Within three weeks, you know, at three weeks, I started really feeling the one in the elbow. Um, I was driving a FedEx truck at the time, so I'm constantly doing this and I'm moving boxes. This thing was really getting to me. I finally got to the point where I, I, and I can absolutely remember doing this, guys. I actually pulled the truck over to the side and I watched 
this weird little red dot, which now, by now, looks like a small, tiny donut. Because there's a hole in the middle of that thing. And I'm watching this weird little donut in the side of my elbow. And I saw something pop up out of the middle of it and then go back in. And yup, it freaked me out. So I right away started squishing and started, and after about 20 minutes of messing with this thing, not only did I get a chunk of it out, I also killed it. That's not a good thing, because guess what? Now it's gonna get infected. So long story short, within a week or so, my entire arm was swollen and bright red because I had killed the botfly maggot that I didn't even know was there had killed it in my arm. It became infected. Now, why doesn't a sore in your body with a live bug living in it, does, why does that not actually become infected all the time anyway? Why is your body, why does our body not attack that, man? We have, we have any body, you know, stuff that does that. So here's the, here's the other cool trick. The, the botfly maggot, inside the warble and I and I actually contacted a buddy of mine from from Drexel Academy to, to make sure I was on this. The theory is and I he he calls it a theory but this is a fly expert. I go with what he says. The theory on this is that they actually produce a natural antiseptic if you will that is inside the warble that fools our body into thinking there's nothing wrong, nothing going on here, nothing to see, so just ignore this. Well, when you kill that, that maggot inside the warble, that antiseptic stops working and then your body attacks it, then it becomes an infection and then it gets bad and not a good thing. So I had this problem going on. Well, at the same time now, I've also got something going on in my leg and I got something going on in my head and I'm kind of freaking out. A Google search quickly got me where I needed to know, you know, Belize, Botfly capital world, symptoms of botfly, very easy. No, very easy. There's a lot of botfly on the internet and most of it is disgusting. So prepare yourself if you really want to go there and watch that stuff. But I ended up with one still left in my leg and I ended up with the one in my head. Now the one in my leg wasn't such a big deal because all that is, it's just calf muscle. So the warble, as he, as that larva pushed in, it was simply just pushing the muscle and the tissue out of the way. Still feeding on living tissue. Keep in mind, every single bite they take, you feel it and it hurts because the bigger they get, the bigger bites they're taking. So these things begin to get painful after a while. But it was pushing into my calf, and it was there was nothing but muscle, nothing but tissue. It could easily stay in there as long as I decided to let it, and it could have grown. Um, and I, seriously, man, and that whole process probably five weeks out. I lasted about five weeks with a botfly larva in my leg, living in its warble, eating my flesh while I could feel every bite. And at about five weeks, I kind of had enough. Um, the one in my head wasn't as much a problem, and I'll get into that in a minute. But, but the one in my leg was beginning to become a problem. Um, it hurt, and it hurt a lot. So at some point, I finally got to the point where I was able to move and get in under and squish and squeeze, and I got that thing to where then uh, we were able to grab that with a pair of tweezers, and we were able to extract it. And all of these, the, 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 the one that I got out of my elbow, uh, the one I got out of my leg and eventually out of my head, those all went into, you know, an alcohol vial. I kept these things, man. This is cool stuff for me. I thought it was cool. Um, now, granted, I'm still into the process. I'm still into how incredible these bugs are. I'm still thinking in terms, I'm thinking like a bug guy. I'm not grossed out by these things. Don't get me wrong, man. Um, I was grossed out by the inset of what it was, but as soon as I found out they're not fatal, they don't leave long-term damage, they're not going to create, you know, there's, there's really, the reality is they really don't cause long-term problems. They're a nuisance, they're an annoyance, and they are painful. So that was what I was looking forward to. Not so much, but I really didn't think that that was a big deal. As long as they're not fatal, man, as long as they're not going to cause long-term organ damage and things, didn't really care. So... Now I've got the one out of my elbow and a 
about five weeks now, I'm popping the one out of my leg and I get that out and that goes into the alcohol vial. Um, and then I get to the point where I've got this one left in my head. Well, I was already doing some public programming at the time. I was also, by that time, I was really deep with the 4-H club and working with kids and standing in front of 4-H groups. Um, so it was ironic how I would be standing in front of a group of people and while I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing with these folks, I'm also feeling a bug eating the top of my head. Um, really. So what I learned though is the, the warble on the top of my head became a problem because guess what, man, there's a skull. And it went through the dermis and hit the skull. And once it grew too big to go any further, it was up against my skull it turned sideways and it started growing sideways, which became a bigger problem because now that that maggot, because let's keep it real, that maggot has to turn at an angle to take a breath of air. And each time he moves and each time he eats and each time he you know does anything, I'm feeling it. So um, there were there were some long term punchlines on that where some of the kids in the 4-H club, once I admitted to them what was going on, they thought, well, how cool would it be if the if the botfly maggot could actually talk to me and you know connect in my brain? And there was a long running joke over that because it might have been interesting, might have been terrifying too. But so I, I left these bugs in my body, at least the one in the top of my head, for a long period of time. Um, I think I went about six to seven weeks with that. Um, and in truth, it was probably only probably had another week to go, um, maybe, maybe two weeks at best. Um, and I think it would have popped. Now what, what they do is when they're going to pupate, they don't stay in your body to pupate. They leave your body. They literally squeeze and crawl their way out to pupate and they get into the substrate or wherever they go on the ground and they pupate. And then, you know, X amount of weeks later, then you have an adult bot fly flying around again. That's how the cycle works. The trick to the larva is in order to extract them, they're extremely difficult to extract because check this out right here, this picture, all right? They are surrounded by a row of hooks. And not only one row, they're surrounded by many rows of hooks on the segments. Those hooks are back turned. So if you try to extract the larva simply by grabbing it with tweezers and pull it out of the hole, guess what, man? you've got hundreds of little hooks that are holding that larva, that maggot, inside the warble. And odds are, if you pull hard enough, you're just gonna rip it in half, and now you've got an infection issue to deal with. So the idea is, is to try and get in underneath them, squeeze them from below, and pop them out, literally, in those terms. If when you go looking on the internet, you'll find out they pop them out. I don't wanna pop mine out, I just wanted to get it out. So at about six or seven weeks, I finally came to the conclusion, this, this guy's got to go. He can't do anymore. It's hurting me so bad. So as much as I wanted to leave him in there full term, I just couldn't do it. So I had to get him out. It, it hurts. So a little bit of help, and we got in under there, and we squeezed and squished, and we were able to get enough of it that we were able to extract this larva. And I'm going to get really gross with you for a minute. So hide your ears if you and here we go. All right, when... When we popped that maggot out of the, the, the warble on the top of my, my scalp, it literally fizzed almost as if you opened up a soda bottle. Um, no lie. There was that much pressure in there from that, that, that warble and all the, the whole thing that when we popped that larva out with those tweezers, it fizzed. Um, which pretty much made everybody there kind of grossed out and sick, including me. That was that was on a little over the top. I could, I could have done without that. But it too goes into the vial. It too gets preserved forever. It too is now in the Bugman collection. And what a cool, maybe gross, but what a cool adventure this makes, man. Uh, we don't have to like these these bugs and insects because they're, you know, they're attacking us, which they're not doing. They're doing their deal. And their deal is they go after living tissue on mammals. That's their deal. If they hit humans, that's just how it works. But the, the, uh, Dermatobia homus is the one that goes after humans most likely. And if you're going to go to Belize, you probably want to keep in mind, you're going into the botfly capital world with the, with 
the bot flies there, don't don't discredit going to these places. Don't don't let that be a deal breaker for you. Um, they're a wonderful place. Belize is a wonderful place to go. Good for bugs, good for tourists. It's just a neat place. So I encourage everybody to go to Belize. Don't let the bugs scare you away, all right? But know that bot flies exist. Know how incredible these things are. They, they go out, catch a female mosquito, lay their eggs, turn it loose. The mosquito then deposits eggs on the host. And eight weeks later, there's a bumblebee size right there, man. There's a bumblebee sized botfly pupa somewhere on the ground. That larva was inside a host living on the living tissue of the host. I get it, man. It's not always fun. Not always, you know, not always great to hear about, but you have to give bugs and insects the credit they deserve you have to give nature the credit it deserves for having these types of organisms in the in the ecosystem. What a cool, cool bug. So who knew, man? Flies. They're not very exciting for most of us, but there's a few flies out there that are awesome. All right, guys. Look, man, early dismissal today. I'm giving you back your day. I just wanted to talk to you about the bot fly and to tell you how awesome I think it is, even though it probably grosses everybody out. Still a a cool story and something that I like to uh, kind of bragging rights for being in Belize. All right, guys, find me over there on Instagram. Find me on YouTube, man. Like and subscribe and make sure you hit that bell. Everybody likes to do that. Um, demand is big for virtual stuff right now and it's only getting bigger because I got libraries coming at me now. So stay with me. I will be here as often as I can to hang with you guys and let's be well. Let's be safe. Let's be kind, okay? You guys understand. All right, guys. I'm giving you back your day. Have a good one.